we are out doing today, man. It is currently two o'clock. Just starting the day. I woke up like an hour ago, but we're already getting to the word. You know what I'm saying? I gotta read, man. You gotta get your word. Oh, can I get cheese? Um, and spinach. You want fish today, right? Yeah. And onions, red onions. And then uh, sriracha ranch. We'll give it to that and I'm all good. Get a burrito. Burrito. Oh, to go, please. How y'all doing today, man? What's y'all up to? I'm here getting some food. We're gonna shut this place down next year. I'm upset. We're trying to get it. We're trying. To, someone bought this place out. We're trying to get it like reverse. We're trying to like sign a the competition. Hey, support. I need my burrito. I'm trying to get comfortable vlogging in public, man. It's not easy. I don't care what nobody said. I don't know how they've been doing it back. David Dobrik and all them back in the day. But I'm kind of get comfortable, man. Hey, but look, I got my food. I'm vibing. You know what I'm saying? It's about to be good. Got a burrito. I uh, got spinach. Y'all heard it. Though. Spinach, chicken, rice, cheese, onions. And that's the thing. But then we got nachos on the side. I'm going to eat them nachos with it. About to be hit. Got a sweet tea because sweet tea is the best drink ever made. Then it's cheer wine. Hmm. What's your favorite drink? Y'all tell me. What's your favorite drink? I don't even know. I think mine has to be. It's definitely sweet tea. But after that, I think cheer wine and pink lemonade are like five. All right, y'all. How y'all doing today, man? We are in Isaiah, the 41st chapter today to end off vlog 130. Gosh. Dang, that's a lot. Vlog 130. That's a lot of days. 330, what? I need 365 days for a year. 366 because it's a leap year. That's going to be a that's gonna be a lot of videos. 130, we're in 130th, so it means 130 days straight of in the word, getting the word in. And we are officially in Isaiah, the 41st chapter. We are about 15 chapters um, away from finishing Isaiah. But you know, so let's try and enjoy every single last thing we get. Today, I wanna to talk about humbling yourself to God. I wanna call this the humble worm. Because when I think of a worm, I think of something that's dirty, something that, that dwells in the dirt. It's the lowest of the low. Um, anything that dwells in dirt has to be dirty, correct? I mean, that's in my mindset, that's as low as you can get, literally. And so I think that's the importance to, because today we're going to read about how we must almost value ourselves as worms. In the aspect of when, you, when we stand next to God, we almost look like nothing because our power compared to God is nothing. We are nothing more than creation. But then that's what makes it so beautiful is the fact that God values us even though we are so lowly in comparison. We are literally nothing because we can do nothing. Only thing we can do is that which we can do with our hands. And the second that we pass away, our, our, the things we can do are basically done. There is no more that we can do. But God's hands are so strong that he can go even further than what we can see. What, what's so beautiful here in the first, the first seven verses of Isaiah, the 41st chapter, it, it illustrates just the work that God does behind the scenes, the things that you can't control. Because the only thing you can do is control yourself and, and, and control the things that happen with you. But you really can't control the things that happen behind closed doors because you are not there. You can control what people are saying about you, what they're scheming to do to you. But the thing is, the Lord is always there. He is omnipresent, which means he is in every situation. He is omniscient, which means he knows all things. And because he is omnipotent, which means he is all powerful, he has the ability to be anywhere at all times. And if affects everything at all times because and he's omniscient so he knows the schemes he can stop them before they even occur and that's what's so beautiful is that we understand that god works things for our benefit even behind our backs when we don't even know people are scheming god is protecting us when when when, when people are are looking to do our worst god is always seeking to do our best and because of that we can have strength and comfort in the fact that god is always working on our side but the thing is, a lot of us will not entrust ourselves to God to allow him to do that work. A lot of us lack that faith. And if you don't invite God into the situation, because he is a God who, who gifted us with free will, he will not impose himself upon us. A lot of us are putting ourselves in danger by just living lives separate from God. And a lot of people say, why does God allow these bad things to happen? The thing, from the beginning, we invited sin into the world when we choose to separate ourselves from God. And I think a lot of us have to have to look at it in that way that these bad things don't occur because we have a God who doesn't care. 
These things happen because we had men and women who chose not to care enough about who God was and chose to step away and said there might be something. Y'all ever had y'all ever been in a relationship and somebody chose to step out of the relationship? It's not because the other person didn't care they stepped out. Usually when someone steps out of a relationship, it's because they didn't value the person that they were with enough. They didn't value what that person brought to the table. And we have a lot of people who have, who have relationships with God who are always stepping out day in and day out. Every time we sin against God, we are stepping out of our relationship with him and saying, God, I know what you have to offer, but I believe there may be more in this world. But we have to understand that, again, God has much more. He has eternal things. This world offers nothing but the temporary. And if we value the temporary more than what God gives us, we have to really ask ourselves, what are we? And I think the best thing you can do is look in the mirror and imagine standing next to God and realize just how you are almost like nothing. You were more than a worm. But the thing about God is that he makes you so much more. It is him that is in you. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. It's the power that works in us. It's not our own power, but it's, it's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that dwells within us that gives us the ability. But as long as we don't rely on him, we will be nothing more than worms. I'm going to go ahead and read verses 18 through, I believe, 16. It says, But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, who are, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, I brought you from the ends of the earth and called you from its farthest corners. I said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you. I haven't rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Be sure that all who are enraged against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who contend with you will become as nothing and will perish. You will look for those who contend with you, but you will not find them. Those who war against you will become absolutely nothing. For I am the Lord your God, who holds your right hand, who, saves, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm, Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you. This is the Lord's declaration. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. See, I will make you into a sharp threshing board, new with many teeth. You will th um, thresh mountains and pulverize them and make hills into ch uh, chaff. You will winnow them and, <clears throat> and wind, and a wind will carry them away. A whirlwind will scatter them, but you will rejoice in the Lord. You will boast in the Holy One of Israel. I think what is amazing here is in verse 13, or it says, verse 14, he says, Do not fear, you worm Jacob. He refers to them as a worm, and if you and that's that's basically, he's calling them little, nothing. A worm is that that's the lowest of the low. Honestly, if, if you told another man he's a worm, you're calling him less than a man when you call him a worm. He's basically letting you know that you're puny, you're nothing by yourself, you are nothing at all, and it's a, it really just makes you humble yourself and ask, dang, I really am nothing in the aspect of what can I really do? The day that a man dies, they are worthless. Their life meant after that. If, if there is no God. And we just died. The entire life we just lived meant nothing. The human race, honestly, it means nothing because we can't leave an everlasting, an everlasting presence. Because in the end, everything must come to an end. But the thing that God offers us is an eternity, which means that we can have an impact that goes much further than just now. And that's why it makes no sense to value the temporary. That's why by ourselves, we are worms. But verse 15 and 16 highlights what God can do with us. It says he will make you into a sharp threshing board, new with many teeth. You will thresh mountains and pulverize them and make hills into chafe. What worm do you think is going around pulverizing stuff? I ain't never seen a worm have been scared in my life. But the thing is that God, God makes it clear that he gives you a power not of your own. Earlier he was talking about um, in verse 10, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. That we're not supposed to fear. We are supposed to be at comfort because God is our strength. We are supposed to find value not because of ourselves but because of God. But every day that we choose to walk in an in, in egotistical life, one of pride and, and not humble ourselves, we are, uh, we are diluting the power that's within us. We are adding water to, to a drink that's supposed to be sweet. Y'all ever had like watery sweet tea? The thing, it's supposed to be a nice sweet drink, but you keep adding water into it and you're taking away the, the potent sweetness in it. You're taking away the strength that God is giving you every time you're choosing not to rely on him. Because the strength is there. 
It's just, it just comes down to whether or not you're going to access it. The key to it is humbleness. The key to God's strength is relying on him. But anyone who relies on himself more than God will have to rely on their own strength. And God refers to them as a worm. He calls us worms. Which listen to our power is, is nothing compared to him. It's tiny. And that's not an egotistical claim by God. It's the truth. One thing about us, a lot of people don't want to live by the truth. They want to live by what makes them feel right and comfortable. It's a lot more fun to get things on your own. It really is in life. But at the end of the day, if there's a better way, a more efficient way, why not follow it? And the thing is that Jesus Christ has claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. There are a whole bunch of lifestyles in this life that, that lead people to some type of happiness. I'm sure there's people who, who truly do believe in their other faiths and they find some type of joy following these purposes. There are people who live in sin and have fun living in these purposes. But at the end of the day, they serve no eternal reason. It's nothing but a temporary pleasure and joy. And so while, while a lot of people will be like, why are you pushing your thing? Why are you trying to help other people? Why are you going out and, and preaching this word? The reason we as believers have to be so strong and stand on it and go out and preach it is because we understand there are ways that seem right to man. But at the end of the day, the truth remains the truth. And so while we could sit here and watch other people enjoy themselves, we would be doing a disservice and we would be walking in not love. We would be, well, honestly, we would be very selfish to sit here and not share a message that could save somebody's eternity. Whether or not they choose to follow us on them. But at the end of the day, this is an offer God has made to all his people. For God's hands crafted all man. But the thing is, a lot of people aren't children of God because they've not chosen to be grafted into the family of Christ through the spirit. A lot of people are made by God in the physical, but in the spirit, they claim nothing but the devil through sin. And I think it's very beautiful here in, um, in the 8th through the 16th verse where it talks about verse 13 through 16. Um, where basically it's talking about God fighting the battle for us. It says, for I am the Lord your God who holds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. A lot of us have to just accept that help. We just have to ex accept God's hand in the midst of the fight because we're never meant to fight on our own. And every single time, uh, the verse 11 through 12 is what I mean. It says, be sure, for, uh, be sure that all who are enraged against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who contend with you will become as nothing and will perish. When you give your burdens in life to God, your issues, your struggles, whatever they are, whether it's a sexual desire or the desire of the flesh, whatever it is, your greed, your lust of, of, of money and the things of life. When you give them to God, all our battles that we face, it, it'll be pulverized almost like it was never there because God will make the, 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 the wrong ways go will turn right. And the things that try to hurt us, he will, he will turn them into our benefit. But as long as we try to hold on to them, they will continuously hurt us. And that's why we have to just learn to trust in God, allow him to do his work in us. Because we have a fantastic God who wants to do fantastic things in our life. But we must move as a humble worm and allow him to have, make us soar like eagles. Because at the end of the day, God is as high as it gets. And as long as we're worms, we can do nothing but affect the ground. But God wants us to do so much more in this life. But we must understand first that it must be done through him. So I say humble yourself like a worm. Understand your value. But understand that your value is not all that you have to be. As long as you depend on yourself, that will always be your value. But God says that he is the value in you that goes so much further than this life could ever give you. Let us pray. Dear God, I just want to thank you for the fact that you are open, Lord God, and you are there for us. You never close yourself off and never close us off from your love. You are always there for anybody who accepts you, Father. The gift, Lord God, that you gave us from the cross 2,000 years ago, Lord God, does not perish with time nor expire. We have all the way until the time that you come back. And you said you're not coming back until everyone hears your word. And everybody has heard the word, Lord God. It means everybody has the chance. I pray that we'll accept it. And after we accept the gift of eternity, Father, help us to accept the gift, Lord God, that you have given us in this life. The gift of obedience, Father. Because when we walk in obedience, it lets us know that we are walking with you. And if we're walking with you, then wherever we go, you go. And wherever you are, God, there is peace, joy, happiness, strength. And there is so much more than we could ever give ourselves. And all that we lack is, is, is gifted by you, Father. But as long as we choose not to accept that gift and walk with that gift, then we will lack. But we understand, Lord God, you are our abundance. You are our gift. You are our strength. You are our joy, Father. So we choose you every single day of life. Just be our strength, God, and get us through these days that we may be encouraged with every step we take. It's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Well, y'all, Isaiah, the 41st chapter, log 130. That's the vibe, man. Hey, shout out to my boy Connor over there. You know what I'm saying? Room looking clean because we're moving everything out. Still not clean enough, but we can get it done. Hey, man. Got you in a minute. If you enjoyed that vlog, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I pray you enjoy the vibe, man. Hey.
Yo, let me. Young and winning, move straight out of state, they coming back. They call me Alex at the crib, but they be on the track. My homie Dorsey saying that it's me, but he the Mac. The shorty call me Chester, she a fly that I attract. 